Hello and welcome to my tutorial on OCRAS Chemistry Module 1 Part 2 Subshells and Energy Levels. Today we're going to talk about subshells. So, an electron shell is made up of atomic orbitals with the same principal quantum number n. Within each shell, orbitals of the same type are grouped together as a subshell. In each subshell, it is made up of one type of atomic orbital only. And there are four types, S, P, D, and F. A subshell is a group of the same types of atomic orbitals, S, P, D, or F, within a shell. So, the N, when if n equals 1, the 1s one subshell will be filled with two electrons. And at the n equals, if n equals 2, then one, two electrons will be filled with 1s, and 1, 2, 3, 4, Six electrons would fill up the 2p subshell, eight electrons. But if n equals three, then the two electrons would fill up the 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 one s subshell, and the and the two two p and the three and the three d. No, oh, sorry, it would be the three s. Then the 3p, this is a 3 now, 3p, and then 3d. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 electrons. Each shell gains a new type of subshell, but each orbital can only hold up 2 electrons. That's why it gets a bit funny after 3. So, moving on to part two now. Um, we have these things called energy levels. Now, electrons can only occupy certain energy levels. And the higher you go up the energy levels, then the more energy um, is increases. Energy increases as you go up the subshells. So, this would be 1f. So, 1s and all the way up the top of it will be the 4F. You don't have to learn about the, f the F block, but you have to know that. Right, okay, so we'll talk about the electron configuration in the periodic table. So the periodic table can be looked at in terms of subshells. So the first subshell would go, you start reading left to right, 1 is 2, 2s2, 2p6, so 1, 2p1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 2s2 would get 1, 2, 3s2, 1, 2, so this is the S subshell here, I'll let, I am going to label it S, S, this is the D subshell, this is the F subshell, and this is the P subshell. This entire block here, except for when it goes like this. There is a there is a small fine line between here and the P subshell. But you don't, you don't necessarily get problems like that. You only usually get asked up to the first two periods from hydrogen to argon. And if they're really, really lucky, if you're really, really lucky, you might get all the way up to krypton. Now oh, that's quite gnarly down there. Um, so, yeah, you, electron configuration can be can be found step by step if you follow from hydrogen and helium all the way through to set elements. So we'll go for boron now. So if we go 1s, 2, 2s, 2, 2p, 1. And you write it like this 1s, 2, 2s, 2, 2p, 1. Moving on to part 4. Uh, 
um, this is this is the, this is how to also represent um, electrons orbitals. So for boron here, if we use build up subshells 1s, 2s with increasing energy, and then 2p, 1 nitrogen, 1s, 2s, and then 1, 2, 3 filling up. Up, up for one electron, down for the second electron, up for one electron, down for a second electron. And for oxygen now, we have one subshell filled, two subshells filled, three, and another two there. So these two are full, these aren't full. So oxygen will want to find two electrons when it reacts to make a full subshell because 2p6 is the full one in this example and 2p subshell is the full one in this example and it's also the same for boron. Moving on to part 5 um, if you look for uh, an electric now an electric configuration is the arrangement of electrons in an atom. So as we looked at earlier, these sorts of orbitals occupied. Now if you look at the X, Y and Z, it just means that X is the type of orbital orbital and Y is the number of electrons in the orbitals making up the subshell. So this is just a way that the book has used to, to to get your head around where uh, all the electrons have been derived, and, th and this is the standard notation that you usually use in exam questions. Um, I will upload some exam questions for you to try on these. Yes, they're fairly straightforward, but you have to use the periodic table in the way that I mentioned in part three, like this. So, why don't you go get your periodic table and write and annotate all of these blocks here. I I highly recommend it because it's really really helpful. And if you just put a mark as where to start when you identify atoms. So you start from hydrogen to helium, and you work your way from left to right. Um, they, they are very useful. So moving on to the next part now. Electrons in the periodic table. Electron shells overlap. So if you look here, n equals 2 and the 2p, 2s and 2p subshells do overlap at n equals 2. But equally, at n equals 3 and n equals 4, the 4s, for 4f, 4s, and the 4, the 3d and 3s all overlap at n equals 3 and n, n equals 4 and this is a, a, another diagram that that ma makes more clear as to my explanation for the subshells earlier so as you put, work progressively down the periodic table you go 1s for hydrogen and helium 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, 7s but you only ever work up to 4s, 3d, and works progressively downwards to 4d and 5d, and the f block starts at 4f and 5f, and finally, ions have fewer or more electrons than the standard atoms, depending on their charge. So, if chlor chlorine minus ion, ion will have one extra electron, and you just write the normal configuration plus one more but unless that subshell is full in that case you move to the next shell okay I hope you found this tutorial useful and I hope I hope to see you the next time we go through OCR AS chemistry thank you for watching